Um, now, this is a very truly applicable um, problem because uh, for any of you that are familiar uh, with planes and their paths and whatnot, um, if you've ever been on a fly, I thought this was the coolest thing. I was having a total nerd out moment when I went to uh, Italy two years ago. Um, they show the map of like your, your flight path. Um, and even though we were going from Charlotte to Italy, which is roughly on the same line of latitude, we went like all the way up the East Coast. Um, we went, technically we flew over Canada to get there and it has to do with uh, winds, it has to do with the curvature of the earth, it has to do with the amount of rotation. I mean, it's, it's complicated to get from point A to point B in a plane. You think that, oh, well, you know, I can just fly straight there. But they have to follow a curve. Now, this is a very simplistic example of this. We are just breaking this down into the plane and the wind. There are way more factors than that. Um, but we're, we're going to keep it simple in this case. So, the flight plan has this pilot leaving San Francisco International Airport flying west five degrees north. So this is a little bit different than the bearings we've been given so far. There's a 65 mile per hour wind that is blowing at an angle of north 60 degrees east. We want to find the direction angle that the plane is actually flying on. Okay, so even though this pilot points her plane in this direction, she's really kind of going a little bit off of that to get where she really wants to go. But because whoever put her on that path took into consideration wind, direction, and things like that. Um, so we are assuming that the speed that the, the plane is traveling on is 450 miles per hour with no wind. Okay, so we're going to find the actual speed that this plane is flying at. We're going to find the actual direction that the plane is, is flying even though it's pointed in this direction, okay? So, let's start with the plane, okay? Let's start with the plane. The plane is flying west. We've got to start west and go five degrees towards north. So, that angle is with the negative x-axis, and its speed is 450 miles per hour, Let's go ahead and label the angle we're actually going to use in our calculations, 175. Because your angle must always be measured from the positive x-axis. So the plane's x component is 450 times the cosine of 175. Y component, 450 sine of 175. Go ahead and get those decimals there. Please, please stop me if I lose you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, so if you account for the fact that you know you're in the second quadrant and you stick a negative with the x, it's going to give you the same number because that's a reference angle. That was the whole point of reference angles. They give you the same value. They just don't include the positive and the negative. Okay, so... Same deal here, if you just plugged in 5, you would get the same numbers, except your x wouldn't be negative, okay? If I had plugged in 450 cosine of 5, I get the exact same number. It's just positive instead of negative, which makes sense because 5 degrees is measured from positive. So it would be the exact same triangle over here. It's just flipped over, so x is positive. Okay. Um, so that's why I emphasize that you need to measure it from the positive x-axis. That way you don't have to worry about the positive and the negative. But you should, you should do a double check right here. When you get the x and y, make sure they agree with where you're at. You know you're in the second quadrant. x should be negative. y should be positive. 
We know that we are closer to west than we are north, so the majority of our magnitude should be in the x component. The x component is significantly larger than the y component, which makes sense, because we're closer to west than we are north. We're more horizontal than we are vertical. Okay, now let's look at the wind. What do they tell us about the wind? The wind is 65 miles per hour, pretty intense wind, okay, uh, but it's up in the air. Okay, makes sense. Those are stronger up there in the atmosphere. Okay, 65 mile per hour wind blowing at an angle of north, 60 degrees east. So we start at north, we go 60 degrees towards east, and it is 65 miles per hour. So when we break it into its components, it's 65 cosine, don't use 60, because that's not measured with either x-axis, use 30, okay, so 65 cosine of 30, 65 sine of 30, gives us 56.3 and 32.5. Again, make sure that it agrees with where you're at. You're in the first quadrant. X should be positive, Y should be positive. We are closer to east than we are north, so our horizontal component should be greater than our vertical component, and it is. Now, we want to find the actual speed and the actual direction. <laughs> Okay, so we've got to add these together. We broke them down into their components so that we could combine them. We cannot just add 450 and 65 because they're in different directions. Okay, they're in moving in different directions. So we can't just add, them to, um, add those numbers together. We've got to add their components together. So the resultant, Add the x's, negative 448.3 plus 56.3. Um, now, I will mention that usually when I do these problems, I don't round in the intermediate steps. So if you're looking at one of my answer keys, your answer may be slightly different um, because what I did instead of rounding to the nearest tenth before I added them together, I just added 450 cosine of 175 plus 65 cosine of 30, put it in all at once. Um, so it may differ by a decimal point or two. Okay, um, That's our resultant. So the plane is still in the second quadrant. Okay, The wind's not that strong to blow it all the way to the first quadrant. Still in the second quadrant because x is negative. Um, y is positive, but let's find its actual speed. We need the actual speed. The actual speed is the magnitude. So magnitude, square the x, square the y, add them together, take the square root. But it's a negative 392. Either put parentheses around it or just drop the negative. Okay. Either put parentheses around it or just drop the negative because it will mess up your answer if you do not. You will actually get an error if you do not, because that would be a negative number plus a positive that's not bigger than the negative, so you can't take the square root of the negative. But anyways, um, the actual speed of this airplane would be 398.5 miles per hour, which makes sense because the wind's, in essence, working against this plane, Okay, the wind is blowing towards the first quadrant. The plane is trying to, to fly out of the second quadrant, so it, it makes sense that that would reduce its speed. And we need its actual angle, so we do the inverse tangent of y over the x. You do need the negative here. Okay? You do need to include the negative here. You only drop the negative when you're squaring it. Okay? Um, now, here's another case. We're in the second quadrant. You, you've got to know beforehand that this is going to be a reference angle. Okay, You've got to know beforehand that this is a reference angle. Do not just slap negative 10.4 on your paper because that's not the actual answer. That's in the fourth quadrant. Okay, Negative 10.4 is in the fourth quadrant. 
Our plane is in the second quadrant. So we need to use that as a reference angle, 10.4. We need this one right here. So what is that, 179.6? Did I do that right? Nope, 169. 169.6. Okay, so the actual speed is a little less than 400 miles per hour. The actual direction angle is 169.6 degrees. If you really want to have fun, you can put that in bearing form, but you don't have to. Uh, if you're curious, uh, take the 90 degrees out of that. Uh, 169.6 minus 90 degrees. So in bearing form, this would be north 79.6 degrees west. You don't have to do that, just throwing it out there if you want to do something a little extra, okay? Um, that, that would be that angle in the very form. But I'm fine with you just giving it to me measured from your class of x-axis. So if you don't get the bearing, don't worry about it, okay? Not a big deal. Not a big deal. We're sailing due south at a speed of 22 miles per hour, and the current is flowing at south 8 degrees east, at four miles per hour. What is the actual speed and bearing of the ship? So this is going to be the exact same thing as the plane, okay? But this time we just have ship and water. And actually I'm going to change my colors and be very careful of how quickly I say that. Um, <laughs> ship and water. My water needs to be blue. I have a little OCD thing about that. Um, Okay, the ship is sailing due south, okay, due south. That means that it is going directly south, okay, um, at 22 miles per hour. Now, um, this has nothing to do with this problem, but I think the example on the back that I'm going to ask you to do in a little bit says, I think one of them says something about like southwest, but it doesn't have a degree in between the south and the west, that means that it's directly between south and west. Okay? It's right in the middle of south and west. So you, you know, add 45 to 180. Okay? Um, but let's look at this problem. Okay? Uh, magnitude 22. What angle is this right here? 270. Okay? 270. That is the angle we're going to use to break it into its components. So its x component, and really you can visually do this. Um, what is its x component? Zero. It's not moving to the left or the right at all. Its x component is zero, so that means its y component is negative 22 because it's going down. Okay, it's going south, so it's negative 22. You would have gotten that if you did 22 sine of 270 you would have gotten the negative with the 22. So if you don't see that, that's fine. Go ahead and crunch the numbers like you normally would, but I'm just trying to save a little bit of time. Okay, the water is flowing south 8 degrees east. So south 8 degrees towards east, not very much. That would be, what, negative 82 degrees? And it is 4 miles per hour. So its x component is 4 cosine negative 82. If you want to, you can use positive 278. That works as well. I'm just using the negative angle instead of the positive. So its components, 4 cosine negative 82. 4 sine negative 82. Again, vertical component, very small here. Or, excuse me, horizontal component, very small because we're very close to south. Vertical component, much greater. Now, I'm not going to round this one because if I did, it would round 4 and that would mess me up. So I'm going to add an extra two decimal places on there. I need to add my components. Well, my x component's 0.6 because I'm adding 0 to that. Um, plus negative 22 plus negative 3.961. Uh, 
I'm kind of doing my ad 